I was shocked to discover that I read five books in January of 2024. And I say read because I listened to them, but that still counts. So I'm going to rank them for you. And I'm going to tell you what I thought of each book. And I hopefully I'll tell you what I'm going to read next in February. I'll tell you what's on my list. I discovered you can listen to audiobooks on Spotify for up to 19 hours every month if you have premium. So I'm taking full advantage of this. I'll start with my number five pick. This is The One by John Mars. This book is a sci-fi book that imagines a world where everyone has a genetic soulmate. So you can take an ancestry like 23andMe type test and get matched up with the person who is your genetic match. So as you can imagine, if a technology like that were to come out tomorrow, the existing relationships that it might destroy, the sort of like chaos it could reap worldwide, it, it, the results could be really fascinating. And that's kind of what this book explores. What I really liked about this book was that it was like super fast paced and every single chapter ended with a strong cliffhanger. I love a sort of sci-fi, like dystopian reality, a little bit of hard sci-fi. Like there's no fantasy element here. It's all pretty grounded in reality and it's something that could really happen. And it reads very much like an episode of Black Mirror. What I didn't like about this book was there were times when it felt a little bit um, misogynistic just towards the end. It's still a good read and it's definitely like worthwhile it, it didn't bother me the whole book but like certain the ways certain storylines ended I was like hmm um so that's why this book is coming in at number five on my list the one by John Mars coming in at number four um is uh the Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green and this definitely would have been higher if it was the first time that I read it the first time that I read this book a year ago I loved it it's a collection of short stories essays by John Green who's the guy who wrote you know The Fault in Our Stars and all those great books that you love and his brother Hank Green is on TikTok and they're the Vlogbrothers he's just a wonderful voice for our times we are so lucky to have Hank Green and John Green right now in the world just giving us content because these guys are amazing. Also, if you haven't read Hank Green's books, I definitely recommend both of them. They're really fantastic, but they're very different from John Green's books. <laughs> so um, I what I liked about the Anthropocene reviewed, a lot of the time I'm listening to books when I'm going to sleep at night. So to hear like a 15 minute or 30 minute short story as I'm drifting off to sleep is absolutely perfect. Um, I also love like the breadth of topics that he covers and like some of the essay topics you'll think are not something that you're going to be interested in, but then the essay goes in a completely different direction. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. What I didn't like about this book um, was that I was reading it for the second time. So I couldn't be surprised by the stories hearing them the first time. So that's why it's coming in at number four. Um, number three, the third best book I read in January, 2024 was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. So I had been recommended this book um, on the book talk, uh, Atria Books, um, um, world cruise list that Mark Sebastian was doing. It was one of the books that they were voting on to see if they would read. Um, so I ended up reading this after I read the book that they were reading on the world cruise, um, which is also on my list. None of this is true is about a podcast and it's told um, in kind of dual perspectives from the subject of the podcast and the interviewer. This book made me wish that I could actually listen to this podcast. And the cool thing about the audio version of the book is that they do sort of produce the podcast to a certain extent. What I liked about this book was it was really suspenseful. They produced certain elements of the podcast with the audiobook. So they added in music and they had multiple voice actors and it was just like a really, really well produced um, book. I What I didn't like about the book is that I wish I could see it as a TV series or listen to it as an actual podcast because I feel like the actual story being told would unfold in a more shocking and dramatic way as a podcast. And so I, I almost wish that like the author had explored this as a, a fictional um like serialized podcast journey versus like a book about a podcast which is sort of like a step distantiated from it which is the same experience I have with um Only Murders in the Building like I wish I could listen to that podcast in real life the second best book that I read this month was Recursion by Blake Crouch so I'm a big fan of Blake Crouch I listened to Dark Matter a couple times and a friend of mine is actually working on the Dark Matter TV show that's coming out on Apple TV uh hopefully later this this year. I was worried when I started Recursion that it would be a lot like Dark Matter. Like it does have to do with kind of like multiverse and alternate dimensions, alternate realities and time, but it gets very different. And what I loved about this book and why it's coming in at number two on my list is the way that it deals with time. 
So, you know, when anyone's working with time travel in a fictionalized setting, there's always like rules around it. And you sort of have to like explain how time travel works in the version of the story that you're telling. There's established rules of time travel just in fiction in general that we kind of abide by when we talk about time travel. This book does a really good job of exploring the logic of time travel. And at the end, the way that it um, sets up a time travel reveal, it's just absolutely stunning. It's like little explosions of time travel just keep like going off in your brain and you get to have the experience that the characters in the book are having as it relates to memory and time travel. It's just a really well-structured, really smart, well-thought-out book. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that Dark Matter TV show. What I didn't like about Recursion, I was worried when it first started that it was going to be a little bit too similar to Dark Matter, but it definitely does go a different direction by the end. And then there's a certain scene that I wish I could have seen actually play out in the book that doesn't happen in the book, but you know that it happens based on the way the book is told. Um, you'll have to read it to find out what I'm talking about. All right, so here's the, the big moment. My number one book so far in 2024, my favorite book that I read in January of this year was The Last One by Will Dean. This was, in fact, the um, World Cruise Tour Royal Caribbean book club book of choice that Mark Sebastian was doing and that's why I heard about it was because I was following um, all of his TikToks about that journey and so I picked it up thinking that I would do like the kind of follow along TikTok book club in a very parasocial way but I started it and I could not put it down. This was the book that like got me back into reading this year. What I loved about this book was how driving the pace was. I absolutely did not know what was going to come from around every corner but I really wanted to know. I could not put this book down. I listened to it in like two days straight and I like cleaned my whole house while I did it. Pro tip, listen to a thrilling book while you're cleaning your house. But I, I had no idea where this was going. And like at, at one point I thought there was something paranormal happening. I was so fascinated by the themes in this book and how resonant they are with what's going on in our world today. And I just think that everybody ought to read this or they should make like a TV show or a movie of it so that people can consume it in the format that they want to. Even the ending was like, I did not see it coming. Um, this was definitely my my number one for the month. For the month of February, here's what I'm thinking about reading this month and what I'm already reading. So let me know what's on your list and what I should and should not read. So already I finished Many Lives, Many Masters in two days because I loved it and it was very fascinating. I'll tell you what I thought about it. Um, on my wish list, I have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I don't know if I'm going to read this or not. Let me know if you think I, I should explore it. I want to reread All Our Wrong Todays. I checked that out from Libby a few years ago and I really liked it and I think about it a lot. Like I told you I like time travel books so that one is um, on my list to be reread. I have a nonfiction book called Present Shock by Douglas Ruskoff. Um, my sister-in-law recommended the book A Touch of Jen by Beth Morgan. I've got Big Swiss by Jen Began and The Push by Ashley Audrain. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. What should I read next? Um, I do want to get into The Body Keep Score at some point, speaking of nonfiction. Um, and then I've got on my Spotify list, um, I got like a few chapters into The Girls by Emma Klein. And then I had to stop because I ran out of listening hours for the month. So I'm really excited to get back into that one. I uh, saved a book called Who Cooked the Last Supper by Rosalind Miles. That sounds really, really interesting. I read the Gospel of Mary Magdalene uh, in 2023, and that really opened my mind to like women's presence in the Bible and mystic texts. And like, it's, it's just fascinating stuff. I have Barbara Streisand's autobiography, which is read by Barbara, which is definitely the way to read this book. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing a lot more reading in February. So yeah, let me know what's on your list. Let me know what you thought of my reviews. If you agreed, if you disagreed, happy reading.